I've always liked to be able to look out over things. I get claustrophobic at the best of times. I could never sleep as a kid or as an adult with a sleeping bag zipped up. No matter how cold it is, I have to unzip it so I can kick a leg out. Being boxed in's always annoyed me. So I guess paddling out to sea is about as good as a long view goes. And you can see the whole horizon, you can see the, the clouds coming in, the storms coming in. Going to the ocean, I can see out and, and get a good, good view of it. If I know there's going to be waves in the morning, get up an hour or so before sun up, get the kettle on, just to give myself enough time to warm up. I don't like to rush it if I'm going to surf in the morning because it takes me that hour to, to sort of get, get moving when you're going to jump off a rock into the ocean. So yeah, I'll just take my time. I'll play with the cat for a bit, have my coffee, and then uh, jump in my truck and head down north or south, wherever we're going. I guess I was taken to the beach as, as, a, as a young fella. Mum and Dad would take our little air beds and we'd end up catching waves on these blow up mattresses and I guess I just loved it. I did surf a little bit in Adelaide growing up in South Oz, but I really didn't start surfing till I got to California. We were dead broke, but I had just enough money to buy a board and a wetsuit. And there was just a, a really easy takeoff spot. That was the best learning wave I could ever imagine and I just surfed it all day, every day. That's where I could really first started to actually trim along a wave and feel comfortable on a wave. Which is strange, as an Aussie growing up, most people surf in their backyard first and then, and then go overseas later. I think I came home from that trip, which was pretty late, really. I was 19 by then, um, I knew that I loved surfing and every decision I've made since then really has had surfing as a consideration in it, where I've lived, what, what university degree I studied, what jobs I take. Since then I've been surfing in, in Europe and in the Pacific Islands and, and through Indonesia and Sri Lanka and lots and lots of places. Pretty much everywhere, I like just travelling and searching and seeking out waves. Most days I get out there and if I'm feeling tired or I don't know, over it or it's, it just feels like it cleans me not only like properly, like if I've been working in the yard getting all the dirt off, but it just sort of feels refreshing. If I've had a busy day, you know, a crappy day or even just a, just a chill out day, I, I like to go for a surf every day. I just feel like it's a, a cleansing. I just feel like, all right, you've been to work, you surf, you feel clean, you feel energised. Now, some people say you forget about all your worries, I think, depending on how big your worries are. You forget about some of them, or if you don't have many worries, you would forget about all of them. Sometimes I'd, I'd stress out there and think things through, but it gives you a bit of time to think about that. I like speed in general, whether it's riding a motorbike or a fast car or whatever, but you feel like you've weren't it. You've paddled out, you've jumped off a rock, you've, there are you know, other dangers around, and then you've put yourself in that position to get that wave, and then I just feel, it just feels fun. You can surf till you're 80. I'm, I'm 40, 41 now, and I'm, I'm just as keen as I was when I was 21. I can't see when I'm 51 that I'll be any less keen. 
I don't do it to get fit. I don't do it instead of going to the gym, but it's, it's not a bad side effect of something you love. If I go to Indonesia, I'll surf for seven to eight hours a day for 15 days straight and couldn't be happier. And I come home and I feel amazing. Never, never wanted to compete or do anything like that. If there's waves that I'm not getting enough of or I'm falling and not, not doing, I just want to be competent enough to, to make the most of good waves. It's really pretty, pretty simple just going back and forward on moving lumps of water, but I enjoy it. And it is hard to describe because you can get that movement in other ways, but it doesn't give you the same reward. After my first major trip overseas where I was surfing, I came back to, to Adelaide and knew this is not for me. I needed somewhere where there's better waves and so I moved from there to the Gold Coast. So then I did uh, about 10 or 12 years in Sydney. Lived in the eastern suburbs, northern beaches. No complaints, had a good time. Pretty good waves, not great. And spent a lot of weekends coming up to here to get better waves and to get away from the city. And then, Last year we saw this little house come up and Jess and I thought, hmm, that's a, that's a cute little house. Why don't we just move and see how we go? I got a job at the local school and we've been enjoying it and surfing a lot and working on the house and so far so good. Name's Blue, Blue Green. Cats don't surf. He just chills out, sleeps, heaps, don't you? And that's all. I guess growing up, I was always into cars and motorbikes. My uncle was a mechanic out in Cobar in Western New South Wales. And when we used to go there for Christmas time, he had a shed full of dirt bikes and it looks like Mad Max. I loved that from a very early age. This truck in particular, I found it on Craigslist. I saw it first look and I said, I'm gonna buy that car. Got shipped from, from San Francisco, landed in Sydney, and I, I loved it from as soon as it turned up. It's been pretty reliable, it, it chugs along, it likes the dirt roads, and you know, like just the smell of old trucks or old cars in general. And, and now it's my you know, everyday surf vehicle that keeps all my surfboards. I've never really been one for a, for new, new stuff where new stuff is, is warranted. A, a new phone is great. I don't want a phone from 1976, but you know, I've got a 1976 Dodge D100 truck. Uh, we've got a 1975 uh, Mercedes 230, and this house is from 1962. Most of my major purchases are, are old things, which, which I like, I like very much. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely risks surfing. People do get injured. I've, you know, broken ankles and a lot of muscular injuries, you know, tweaked necks and sore shoulder and, and then a lot of reef injuries when you're in um, tropical environments and then infection is the problem. And then it feels like sharks are becoming more of an issue. I don't know marine biologists, I don't know numbers, but it, it feels like there's more around. And we've had a few encounters this year uh, where sharks have come up uncomfortably close to us. It's a real thing. For the, the time in Sydney I was there, I was there 10 years, I never thought of sharks because there was always so many other people in the water, it was never an issue. Now we often surf either on our own or with one or two other people down a dirt track a long way from, from from help and there's no one watching. You know, there's no boardwalk footpath nearby. There's no icebergs restaurant on the hill. If something happens, you, you, you're very aware that it could be, get serious very quickly. So a few places you definitely want to have someone else, even if they're not surfing, like Jess will come with me so she can, she can see, watch from above or, or around. Fishermen say they're always there. 
If you think you're surfing on that beach with no sharks on that beach, you've lost your mind. They're just not right where you are, but they're always there. I'm still super keen and I could still, you know, surf all day every day if I had the chance. Do I need to surf? I guess um, I just want to. I don't need to. I'm going to throw a tantrum if I can't. If something came up, like a really good job opportunity came up where I couldn't surf, I just wouldn't take it. You can't double my income and say you're not allowed to surf. What am I going to do with the money? Like, you can't buy waves. enjoy it, been doing it for a long time and the love's not fading any time I can see soon or... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ran out of steam. I didn't know, I wasn't going to go into the snowboarding thing then because it was kind of different.